What's up guys, Sean McCoy Photography here today. And today I'm gonna walk you through my workflow for using DaVinci Resolve. Um, I use DaVinci Resolve and I replaced it for essentially all of my video editing. Um, I used to use DaVinci Resolve just for color grading and developing LUTs, uh, but I've since moved all of my uh, editing, any of that workflow out of Final Cut Pro uh, or Premiere and shifted it into DaVinci Resolve. I think DaVinci Resolve is a pretty intuitive process. Now, I'm also not somebody who's doing a lot of VFX work or um, creating any sort of motion graphics, um, but I do know that the program has been good for that. But anyway, different video for that. Uh, today, I just wanna walk you through my process uh, for color grading. And um, what I'm gonna share with you today is really about how you can create a structure to push the colors and create, you know, any kind of grade that you want. Um, the grade that I'm gonna have today is not too extreme, but it's gonna be basic enough that you can go back to this sort of structure and really start to get creative with what you wanna do. Um, when, I, when I first started video editing or when I first started as a cinematographer, I was using a lot of LUTs. Um, and I mean, if you, you've been through this process whenever you have LUTs or if you've ever used LUTs before in your life, uh, you find a ton of them online and a lot of them are really crummy. Um, and the problem with LUTs, and even this is with good LUTs, is that you're basically given a filter and there's no way for you to adjust that filter. What I'm gonna be helping you create today is essentially a raw LUT. Um, and it's something that you can go back into with DaVinci Resolve or any sort of color grading uh, program and reformat. And DaVinci Resolve makes that process super easy. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. What's up everybody? So now I have Resolve 16 Studio pulled up. And I'm gonna take a look here at my clips. I just have a couple here that uh, I'm, I'm interested in grading. So I'm gonna drag and drop my first clip in here and we can see right from the start what it looks like. This is shot on a Blackmagic uh, Ursa Mini Pro G2 in uh, Blackmagic RAW. And I think 8.1, eight to one compression. Uh, so there you go, that's what our clip looks like ungraded. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into our color node here and you can see as you pull over you should have your first node. I'm just going to go node label contrast. This is going to be where I do all our first initial basic edits here. So if you go over to your left you'll be able to see this camera here, camera symbol. Uh, this is how you access your raw file, oops, your raw file through DaVinci Resolve. So I'm gonna go to the clip and this is gonna give me access. And so what you'll see on this one, if you're a black magic shooter, you'll see that this is generation four. I'm gonna go ahead and switch that over to generation five, preserve highlights. And I'm gonna make some basic corrections here. So I'm gonna lower the exposure. I'm gonna increase the contrast. I'm gonna increase saturation, just a slight here. And lower that black level a bit. And then what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna go into here, our color wheels, and you'll see lift, gamma, gain, offset. So because this is just what I'm working on for contrast, all I'm gonna work on is just the bottom wheels here. And I have a little bit of trouble with this every now and then. So that looks good to me. Move it down slightly. And so what I find, you know, the trick with resolve and color grading and resolve uh, is not to do too much. So while I am shooting in raw and you know you can recover uh, quite a bit you want to make sure that you don't overdo it and so one of the tools that I have to help me out here is I've got my scopes and I've got this on parade so you know this is a pretty evenly uh, produced or balanced shot here uh, nothing too crazy a little bit of the blues left out of the shadows but we can go ahead and fix that so this is gonna be our first basic uh, correction that we're making here contrast the next thing I'm gonna do is left click go add node add serial label to this and this is gonna be our balance node so this is where I'm gonna make any adjustments that I might want to make 
to the color. So I'm looking at this here and I'm just gonna add a slight bit of blue down in the shadows. In gamma, I'm gonna increase with a little bit of red for those skin tones. And then gain, probably leave mostly alone. Minor, minor changes here with the balance since this is already a pretty corrected shot. So next thing is go over, add node. And this is gonna be our skin node. It's gonna be where we make all of those corrections for our skin. And the first thing you wanna do here is nothing too drastic. Our skin tone looks pretty good. Um, I'd say it's a little green maybe, so introduce a little bit of gamma, just a hair. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another node, but this is gonna be a layered node, so I'm gonna go to add parallel, and this is gonna create this structure here. And so this is where we can really get into some of the uh, uh, complicated maneuvers of color grading and resolve, and where I think this program really does shine. So what we're gonna do here is basically we're gonna create a mask. So I'm going to select H, and that's gonna allow me to start to sample uh, places where I want to focus and refine some of these color changes. So normally what I try to do is uh, focus on hitting where some of the light is and keeping some of the color out of those highlights and really introducing more of those color changes into the shadows. Um, so it takes some finagling here, uh, but once you have you know a pretty decent uh, little skeleton to go off of, let me just do that. Uh, what you wanna do is you wanna go over to the feather tool here and just give pretty broad, you know, I think I actually need to add a little bit more. That's a little strange. There you go, that's much better. All right, so we'll feather this down. There you go. And so you'll see this looks pretty terrible. Like if you were to try to make any color correction here, you get a bunch of noise. Um, so the best way to do that is just to go over to the denoise here. And this softens some of those changes. I'm gonna take, oops. So um, anything here you can make, uh, if you want to make any changes to the uh, shadows, you can make that here. Let's see, it'll, it should filter it out. So if you want to add a little bit of blue to those shadows, uh, this will leave that out there. I'm not going to do anything for now for this. I'm just going to leave that there and it's basically going to act as a filter for what I'm going to do next. So then go add node, add to serial. And this is where we're gonna start doing the bulk of our changes. So go in, node, label. I'm gonna call this, well, let's just actually name this grade. And uh, from grade, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start making and pulling uh, some of this uh, to more of the extreme. So I love to look at the RGB mixer. I think that that's a really uh, fun way to start, um, but to begin, I'm gonna start to introduce a little bit more of this color into the lift and gamma, so you can start to see already that that blue is coming through. I'm gonna pull some opposition here with the gain, have a little bit more red there. I might actually pull this up to a red as well. Actually, I'm gonna keep that low. All right, so that's looking. And now what I'm gonna do is gonna jump back over here to the RGB mixer and I'm gonna play with the blue output. I do love uh, to mess with this blue output here. And I'm gonna get just a nice little pool 
and you'll see that this is affecting the whole image of what's going on here. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this node that we created that was creating sort of a mask with the skin and I'm gonna preserve the details of the skin. Uh, and I'm gonna drag this over, connect the blue square to the blue triangle, and there we go. Now we have that mask coming over. So then here we go. So this is a pretty basic grade. Uh, you can see some of that teal and that orange. Um, if I want to, I see the saturation is a little bit low, so I'm gonna pull that up. But now for the next thing here, we'll look at this. This is our, our plainly graded uh, image here. You see some nice teal in the shadows, uh, orange preserved for the skin tones. And it's so it's good. It's good. I think, you know, you could get away with a gray like this. It's very subtle. And I, you know, I think depending on the project, that's what you want to look for. But if you really want to take it to the next level, uh, I like to use a program called Film Convert, which is a really useful just next step that you can take. So I'm going to go to Add Node, uh, Add Serial, and I'm going to name this Film Convert. Here. And uh, so this is a plugin. You have to buy this uh, separate from DaVinci Resolve, uh, but it is a fantastic program. I like to use. Uh, you plug and drop it in here. Obviously, you have this uh, kind of desaturated image, but it's really flexible in what you can do. Uh, so you know, you go to choose camera, and you can choose whatever sort of layout you have. Since I'm shooting with the Black Magic, I'm going to use Black Magic. Go down to Ursa Mini Pro. Uh, and I'm gonna hold on to the V1 here. And then there we go. So that's what it is right out of the, uh, uh, out of film convert here. What I'm gonna do once I get this is I'm gonna take the film color and I'm just going to pull that out. And I don't want so strong uh, color, you know, contrast uh, that it's overwhelming. So I usually pull down the film color uh, back to about 40, 50, it depends. Uh, I'm gonna reduce some of those curves as well. And what's cool about Film Convert is that you can uh, introduce grain as well, some natural grain. So I have this at 35 mil, uh, millimeter frame uh, grain, so it might be a little d difficult for you to see here. Uh, I, you know, depending on the project, will use that occasionally, but there's also additional settings that you can do here. You know, if I want to desaturate a little bit after adding all of that in, just make it a little bit more subtle, or if I want to add more color to that, uh, which I'm not going to choose to do at the moment. Um, but there's also, you have all these settings to adjust shadows, midtones, highlights, uh, your black point, and all of that. Um, and so I'm going to keep it simple like here. You can convert it to a, uh, a bunch of different, uh, profiles. Um, I do generally tend to keep it on the first ones here. Uh, I like them the most. I think they're the easiest uh, to use, but you do have this flexibility. And this, you know, obviously the, the filter strength will be determined by how much you pull onto the film color. Um, but I'm going to leave that at there. Uh, and so now we have our first clip here. And so you might be thinking, okay, great. Uh, that took so long to make just one clip and and yes color grading can be pretty difficult however davinci resolve makes this super easy um and what you're going to want to do once you have a grade that you like and you have really what this is is setting up an infrastructure that makes sense so that you can easily modify and tweak different grades to go by pretty quickly what you want to do is you want to go up to here to view stills grab still and make sure that you are quick not in stills but in power grade you're going to go to view, stills, grab still, take a picture of the grade that you want to save. Okay, we have our grade up here and I have a ton of grades that I've saved throughout different projects uh, that I will occasionally use. And let's go back to our timeline. We're going to drag and drop another clip. Let's have this one here. This one is pretty similarly lit. Cut to a place that we like. Let's see what this looks like before. Okay, so nice image, uh, definitely desaturated. We'll want to make some more changes so it feels like it's in the same world. Go back to your color settings. And what you can do in Resolve to make this go by much quicker, click on your first that you uh, that you haven't ungraded yet or that you haven't graded yet, uh, and then hold Command if you're on Mac, uh, left click, and then go up here to Apply Grade. 
and you will automatically apply this grade and so we'll see it now. Uh, so this is what's really important about having this infrastructure in place as you can see and this is how LUTs work. Uh, once you copy and paste something over it doesn't automatically fit. Uh, so having this you know infrastructure in place that you can tweak pretty easily uh, but but you know doesn't take a lot of time is super important. So I'm going to go back over here to our contrast and what it looks like here I just need to add some more lift more gamma and already that's looking better um, what I might do since this is a little bit oversaturated uh, compared to the first is I might just come back here and draw that back just slightly again so now here we have uh, this image as well and that looks great and that's coming from this is where we started this is where we're coming from. So again, very subtle changes here. But as you can tell, it makes a big difference uh, in your uh, post-production workflow. So here you have these two clips back together. Uh, and these were shot in a similar space, you can tell. And then so moving between them, it looks like it's still part of the same world. Like, you know, you're not seeing that kind of difference in whatever. So for example, we'll just play around here and uh, we'll, we'll shoot something that was not in a usual setting. So we'll go out here, we'll drag this clip down. And this, obviously, you'd have a hard time connecting these two uh, together. I'm going to turn that volume down. So you have here, this very much feels like it's of a different world. Uh, and it is obviously different lighting, not in a controlled studio setting. So how would you make and translate your grade over here? Well, let's see. So uh, what you can do on any sort of grade that you have, if you have your power grade up in DaVinci Resolve, you can go up to any image, click, and then apply grade. Um, so here we go. Nice. So we have sort of similar vibes here. And that's it, you know. Those are the basics of DaVinci Resolve. Uh, it's a really, really intuitive program uh, to use as color grading, and I love it. I think it's a, a, a beast of a thing. It definitely has helped my workflow uh, go down much, much uh, faster. And because of that, I'm really grateful. Uh, and it's fun as heck. I mean, this is uh, great stuff. And so if you ever want to just like diversify how you're you know, thinking about your images and how you're coming together with your pieces, uh, DaVinci Resolve is a great tool. Um, so I think that's going to wrap it up for this section. We'll go back and uh, I'll go over just a brief overview of what we've learned. So that's going to be everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. That's my structure that I'm working with with LUTs. And what I think you'll find is that you know, the really important thing is that you have that filter that you're protecting your skin tones, you're protecting your highlights. You don't want too much uh, color or distortion to just kind of take over the image. You definitely want more pull in the shadows if you can get it. Um, but I really think the trick here with Resolve is that subtle changes add up. And it's not that you're gonna have one node where you're doing a, a ton of crap. It's gonna be the series of nodes and how you uh, build on top of that. So if you're familiar with Photoshop and their layer system or you're familiar with Premiere Pro and their color grading system, it's a similar concept, but one affects and feeds the other. And so you want all of these subtle changes uh, to add up to this bigger picture. And so that's why I think it's really helpful to break it down in the way that we did between contrast, balance, skin. Uh, just keep yourself organized so that when you go from frame to frame and in any project you'll have I mean, you could have over 500 frames. Um, you're you're really creating a system for yourself where you can go quickly uh, without too much like uh uh uh. And I think that's why uh, this you know kind of structure works, and it's helped me. Uh, so hopefully it's been helpful to you. If it has, uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe uh, for more of this content. It's kind of what I talk about, uh, and uh, get into it next time. All right, thanks guys for watching. Boom.